One me. Three, two, one. Should be live. Hey guys, Rhonda Draculis with RK3 Designs and you are in the right place. This is Tuesday night. We're live coming from my living room and it is Q&A tonight. I'm so excited. I have got a house full of some of the top people in the industry right now and I have them all together. We have our favorite cocktail and we are here to answer questions for you. So it's gonna be a little different tonight. If you guys saw our post on Facebook, we ask you to give us a list of questions that you guys may want us to answer live for you tonight. So we have a few of those questions, but we also have some questions that all of us get very frequently that we want to bring to you. So let me introduce everybody that's here with us tonight. On my left side, first of all, we have Bruce Anderson. Bruce, introduce yourself. Hey guys, Bruce Anderson, Anderson Woodworks USA from Waterloo, Iowa. All right, next we have Clara. Claire Lawrence, Claire Lawrence Art. I'm also on YouTube as well. And the next person needs no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> this is Erica with Artist Till Death. Introduce Yo. yourself, my friend. I'm Erica with Artist Till Death, and you guys have seen me on this channel, and I have a channel of my own, Artist Till Death, and we're so excited to be here yes. out of Dallas, Texas. This is going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the big guy. What's up, guys? Mitch from Stone Coat. Super happy to be back in Texas amongst some of the best in the industry. It's going to be a fun night. And last but not least, I want to say a superstar <laughs> up and coming, Mr. Keith McGinnis from KCDC Designs. I'm Keith McGinnis, KCDC Designs from Eagle, Nebraska, and I was told we could have some fun while we're doing this tonight. Oh, that scares me. So, <laughs> I'm not prepared. Rhonda knows uh -oh. that uh, sometimes when I start talking, I can get going a little bit too far. So, if I start talking too much, Rhonda has this button that she can push. <laughs> Put, that oh, right yes. Put that button right there. <laughs> You've got more buttons in there. Oh, my gosh. Uh -oh. This is one. totally not planned, guys. I had no idea. <laughs> this showed up on your doorstep. That this this, this showed up on my doorstep. <laughs> there might be simple questions we can answer with just a. No. 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 <laughs> okay. Oh, there may God. be some questions we can answer with a. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> some could possibly be a. Maybe. One more time. Uh, maybe. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then in case we do get something wrong, we have... Bye. Oh my gosh. Brilliant. All right, Brilliant. so if you guys aren't enticed by the four seconds that we've been on live, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you people. They're it is going to be fun. Life. I cannot even promise you what's going to happen tonight. So I guess... Uh, let's get started. Uh, Kenny is not here tonight, so oh, wow. he had to go to Dallas. He had, you know, that other thing that he does, that job thing that, that he has, works. that he does, like, you know, whenever he is in Dallas. So we're gonna miss him tonight. So it's just gonna be us. Yep. Um, I do have my um, my computer going. <clears throat> Mitch is going to kind of be our moderator as far as what questions that we answer. He's got it all pulled up yep. and uh, he'll be kind of letting us know. We do have a few questions that I have gotten all the time. Mitch, yep. Keith, Erica, everybody's getting these questions. So we're going to kind of start off with um, some of those questions and then as we start going, we'll start pulling from the uh, audience and getting some more questions. Yep. So I hope that makes sense. So let us know right now, if you're watching, shoot us a question right now in the chat. I'm gonna highlight some of those and we'll be answering those live. So if you wanna engage right now with us, send us your questions right now in the super chat. Okay, uh, alrighty, here we go. I just got up. All right, so guys, I am so excited everybody's here. I see everybody. Oh, Mama Quist is here. Oh. All right. Uh -huh. Hi, Mama Quist. I'm Mama. taking care of your baby. We're making sure he's taken care of. My biggest fan. That's right. 
Okay, so first of all, what I'd like to do is just to kind of get things going is I do have a couple of questions that I've kind of written down that I get a lot. Guys, I answer questions. I probably spend about two to three hours a day answering emails, text, Facebook questions. Um, I love being able to build relationships with all of you guys as well as all of these people here. We're constantly answering questions for you guys and we really appreciate y'all's support. So the first question we're gonna get is, what's the difference between the original stone coat countertop epoxy and the art coat epoxy? And who better to answer that than our expert stone coat countertop person, Mitch? I gotta take off, I gotta start? All right, let's go. You gotta go. start. So the difference, the original stone coat was developed for the countertop you know, environment, the countertop surfaces in your bathroom and kitchen. And art coat came to be from an artist who was hanging their art up in front of the sun. And the sun can yellow uh, epoxy over time, amber epoxy over time. So we crammed in the most UV stabilization you could possibly put into epoxy before it started to degrade its durability, how it functioned. Uh, so the art coat is designed for white and light colored countertops or clear coats over artwork. And the countertop epoxy, you know, acts just the same, mm -hmm. but it has just a little less of those UV inhibitors that cost more. That's why there's this price difference right there with those right. products. So I often get, can I use the art coat with a dark tint? Can I, can I do a black finish with art coat? Yeah. 100%. And I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys, Art Coat is my go-to. And Erica, let us know a little bit about, you do a lot of art, Clara, you mm -hmm. do too. Let us know kind of what you think about it. About the Art Coat? Art Coat is the best because, well, there's so many reasons. So my favorite thing about Art Coat is that it has so much holes in it that it kind of does not yellow that much, that quick. Obviously there's a lot of factors involved. But also the open time, working with it for yes. up to two hours. I've got it to work up to three hours, depending on ambient temperature. Mm -hmm. That's two of my favorite things, workability and the fact that it's going to stay how I know it looks when I send it to my clients. Perfect. For so long, the best. Awesome. It's absolutely the best. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Good question. I'm glad uh, I brought that up. Yeah. I already, I already <laughs> good question, good. Rana. Way to go. Okay, I already got a good question for okay. Brett Cunningham. Oh, Brett. We all know him. Hey, hey Brett. Brett. Yeah, thanks for being here, Brett. He says, what is the most epoxy you will mix up at one time? Okay, so, anybody want to answer that? Okay, yes. Keith, go ahead. I, I limit myself to one gallon. Okay. I can mix up 128 ounces if my project is going to call for, say, two gallons of epoxy. I'll mix up the one gallon. I'll apply uh, my color coat down. I'll mix up the second gallon. Um, regardless, if I do need to mix up two gallons, I'll mix up the first gallon, get it poured onto the surface, mix up the second gallon, get it poured onto the surface. I still have an hour and a half to two hours of work time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still Let me add to that too as well. So those of you that uh, have seen that wall behind me and yeah. our uh, my YouTube videos, that um, turquoise Huge wall. wall. So that we used 22 gallons of epoxy. So we were mixing as we went. We had we had someone, I think it was Kenny. Kenny and I both were yeah. mixing. There That's all they did was mix and then handed it off to us and we started adding the colors and we would lay it down. Now, um, depending on what kind of epoxy you're using, y'all, there's mm -hmm. a million epoxies out there. There's a, there's a million, well, there's not a million, there's a lot of really good epoxies out there and there's a lot of epoxies that really aren't that good for the application that we use because of the short open time and, and things like that but in my experience if you start mixing up a lot like five gallon buckets at a time and you don't have help yeah. and you leave that product in your bucket you're gonna get what we call pot life yep. and it's gonna start heating up now we're not talking about deep pour casting epoxy. Mm -hmm. We're talking about one-to-one -one tabletop epoxy. So, Brett, to answer your question, I'm, I'm, yeah, well, I'm with, I'm with Keith a lot. A gallon is probably going to be my max, 
and we'll just keep mixing and then adding to. So right. yeah, depending on the backup sense. that you have, right? Accordingly, yeah. exactly. Yep. And then you can go for more. Would have been yeah. my answer is if I have a team with me, I'll mix up more. If I'm yep. by myself, and it's also what technique I'm using as yep. well. So exactly. If y'all hear this chirping in the background, my dog is not happy about being in puppy jail. So that's what that noise is. <laughs> Say hi to Gremlin. <laughs> Gremlin. Gribby. It's okay, Gribby. It's okay. Okay. All right. You want another user question? I got a good one. Sure. Let's do All it. All right. What is the best sealer to use to seal the edges on an epoxy shower wall? Want me to go with that one? Sure. So we discovered, Mike uh, actually came up with this idea when we were making shower walls one day and we took the MDF and that's when we started adding the MDF or a wood edge to the, just the outside edge of your shower, the exposed edge. The inside edge that hits another shower wall, you don't have to worry about that because the, the edges are a little more difficult on, yeah. on, the, on yeah. the foam. Mm -hmm. So we hot, I super glue or hot glue that wood to the edge, then you bring your mesh over that, and then the, we round over that MDF or wood, or, mm -hmm. or MDX mm -hmm. is really the best to use. Yeah, the MedX. The MedX, mm -hmm. excuse me, the MedX where the water won't, right. won't hurt it, so. We have an excellent video on that where we literally show step by step how we add that trim piece to our ends of the epoxy, uh, the walls, and it just gives a beautiful uh, rounded edge when you're using that foam. Now, is that, um, I think that's what you're talking about as far as sealing it. That I think that's, I think that's what they're talking about. It's a protective edge as well. As, yeah, it's a protective edge as mm -hmm. well. So I hope that we, we answered that, we understood your question. If not, mm -hmm. ask it in a different way, a little bit farther down. Right. The, the, the shower thing. walls where I, I'm not applying the wood to, like the top and the inside mm -hmm. corner, I round that over a little bit with my sander, and then mm -hmm. as I'm putting the quick coat, yep. the mesh on and all that, I'm rubbing epoxy yep. into those edges. Absolutely. Just to apply some like yep. that. Perfect. So maybe that's what they're talking about. Good. Okay. Great question. Good, good question. Hey, Vamp, I see you're on tonight. Vamp's solo tonight as our moderator. She's the only one she out is. there. She, She's doing so right <laughs> Thank now. you. Thank you, Vamp. We appreciate it. She's running 100 people right She now. is. Okay. Uh, I've got a question here that I get a lot. When do you tape your edges? All right. So, taping your edges is a practice that we do to force the epoxy to stay on your surface. So the reason you would want to force that epoxy to stay on your surface is one, to um, keep your pattern or your design as the epoxy starts to set up, it's gonna make your, uh, your um, I guess your design stay there, okay? But if you only tape your edges when you have three ounces per square foot, what's gonna happen is you don't have enough of that product yeah. when you pull your tape to push that epoxy over your edges. Right. So we never tape our edges unless I'm doing a melted marble or an exotic pour yeah. where I'm doing probably six ounces or more per square, um, per foot. square foot, yeah, <laughs> almost said per square inch, per square foot. Um, I never take my edges on a clear coat. No. Uh, there's not enough epoxy on there to justify doing that. So um, I know a lot of you, yeah, a lot of you will you'll ask me, I cannot get my edges to look nice. And one reason is when I look at your photos, you don't have enough product. Right. So you want to well, add something Yeah, and I've also noticed if you don't do a good enough job to wet those or grease those edges initially, the epoxy is going to continue to, you know, avoid an area, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, you get those runs. So initially, when you first get the material down, wet those edges out with your hand and make sure you leave no dry spots because you may come back and that will stay mm -hmm. a dry spot. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Epoxy surface tension. Right, exactly. exactly. One more other uh, tip on that is after you have, whether it's your color coat or whether it's after you've put down your flood coat um, and you've torched to torch your bubbles out, um, be cautious of not getting that, that torch too close to the edges. If you happen to heat your epoxy up uh, later on in the pour after 30 minutes to an hour, if for some reason you need to torch it, if, if you get your torch or your heat gun 
close to those edges, you're going to heat up just that one area, and just that one area is going to want to drip back down over that edge, and that's what causes those runs, that's what causes those drips. Mm -hmm. So when you're torching, uh, be cautious not to get too close to the edge so you don't heat that area up and make one area thin where it's going to run over that edge and cause those drips. Or more in mind with the torch when you're using that, if you've already got your edges taped up, you removed your tape, and you torch too much, you're going to encourage your epoxy to run, and you're designed to run off. Okay. Right. Yep. Just so, right. just quick torch. Make sure yeah. that. Make sure cool. that. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know about y'all, but I never oh. torch my edge. Nope. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I very seldom would torch my edge. Right. As you torch the surface, you remove all that air. The epoxy is going to self-level over, bringing bubble-free epoxy on those edges. Same right. like when you do a a chopped in marble mm -hmm. you chop in the color on the top and as mm -hmm. that self levels it brings those colors around the hey, edges. Ronda, yeah. would okay. you explain also um once your epoxy is set up and, and you've gotten to that point where it's getting sticky if you've seen that you have some drip lines or you have some runs sure uh, you've got a good method of being okay. able to smooth that out that's a great that's a great uh, topic to bring up so what i do to ensure that i have really smooth edges is about depending on your temperature now, about six hours maybe, when your epoxy is tacky, but it's not stringy. It could even mm -hmm. be eight hours. It depends on your temperature and your humidity. But once you can touch that surface of your uh, epoxy and it's tacky, it's not going to, that's not going to follow your finger up, and you notice that you have ridges on your edges, put a glove on and get isopropyl alcohol squirt it in your hand and then rub those edges and, you, and it's like butter you'll feel that epoxy just melt and level out like butter now if it's too early in the pour and your epoxy is not ready your glove is going to stick mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to rub your hand really smoothly so you're going to need to wait a little bit longer also what you can do is take you a stick a popsicle stick run that stick underneath your edge get rid of all those drips then come in with your glove and your alcohol and you can actually rub all those drips rub your edges yep. and it will be as smooth as butter and you will never have to sand that to get it smooth what so that is a pro book. that is a pro tip but that, the timing is crucial <laughs> the timing is crucial yeah. if you yeah. do it too early you're going to mess up your finish yep. uh your hands going to drag you could possibly actually be cause easy. Some gooey, yeah. some gooey yeah. um, spots. If you wait too long, you'll have no reaction. You won't be able to manipulate right. those sides. I wanted an applause button. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. All they right, so that, that was a pro tip. I gotta, All right. Oh, you want to take one? one? I did yeah. want to go back to Mike's question the about silicone? the seal. Yes, the was, sealer. That's exactly Is that what you going to do? Gonna, okay. That was the one I was going to bring. Perfect. All right, Man, good. found it. Bing! We need a button for that too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mike asks, when installing a shower wall, what sealer should I use in the corners? Like how to seal up those panels? Right. 100% silicone is what mm -hmm. we use, right? Yep. yep. So I use 100% silicone. I call them blobs and I put them all over the back of the of the sheetrock or the waterproofed area. Mm -hmm. And then as you push your shower panel, it suction cups that bad right. boy to right. the wall. And then you take the corners and just do a nice thick bead of right. silicone in there. We did that for your backdrop. Yes, mm -hmm. and also that silicone, if you're going to Amazon, actually comes in colors. Yep. We've done gray countertops, uh, gray countertops, gray showers. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've actually done some marble where we have black and white, and I've actually gone in with two to three different color oh, of, fancy. yeah, that of uh, silicone, and Genius. actually fancy. done yep. that, and it makes it look seamless. So check it out, Amazon. I don't have the leaks, but they do have tinted yep. uh, silicone. And now make sure you don't use silicone at all around a wet. Uh, wet epoxy or we're going to be pouring epoxy because right. the last thing yeah silicone. it's like kryptonite yeah it doesn't epoxy water. yeah epoxy does not like yep. silicone the so. tile section where the grout is sold at the home depot or lowe's is another place you can find colored caulking yeah and silicone is all right they yeah. match grout colors in there so i've gotten there? out of some stuff for that um, i knew there was paint all button. right mm -hmm. next we have another one I got well, one from place. Jay West. Oh, about, I'm looking at the same one. Can I use epoxy in outdoor applications? I need to build an outdoor shower. Okay. Um, I where's my no button? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> All right. Maybe. There is a baby. Is it going to be shaded? Okay. That's, well, that's where my brain Correct. goes first. Okay. Very, is it going to be a direct true. sun? It's a no. Correct. Is it going to be shade? hot outside? All right. So let me, there's a multitude of answers for that question. Are you going to be a text? First of all, <laughs> I'm going to ask you, is the epoxy going to be in a shaded area? All day. Sun, all day. Sunlight and epoxy do not mix at all. Sunlight, UV, UV rays will actually over time degrade epoxy. Uh, now in saying that, I have a little table, I did a video on it, has been sitting on my back porch in full sunlight for about five years. The epoxy, Stone Coat Countertop, it never cracked, it never chipped, but it got very dull. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be one of the things that happens is your epoxy will get dull mm -hmm. if it's in the sun. If you're Direct doing sun, a like right through a kitchen window, there's there's argon gases and things right. in the window that are filtering out a lot of that stuff. Right. So we're talking direct, direct sunlight, sunlight outside. Yeah. So first of all, if you do it on foam, foam is not really uh, meant to be in direct sunlight either. If it's in a shower, obviously it's not going to be getting so direct sunlight. let me sunlight. touch on that real sure. quick. Shower foam, exactly. I've, I've been in contact with 3M because I want to try to get the foam without the slits in it, which right. they actually sell. That would be uh, great. We're going to try to provide that on the website. But they also, I asked them, what's the warranty on this stuff? Like, because I told them what we're doing and then they went and watched the video and they called me back. They said the whole sales team is watching this video. I can't believe you do this with our product. It was <laughs> way rad. cool. But anyways, they said the foam is 100 is lifetime warranty for the bond on that epoxy. What degrades the foam is UV and sunlight. Okay, there you so go. You do not want the, that foam board, like say the back of that foam. You don't want that in the sun. Okay. At all. So if your if your shower is underneath an area where it's not getting direct sunlight, absolutely you can do it. Don't do a white or light finish. Okay. Or black. Or yeah, black will kind of fade a little bit as well. Uh, but if it's going to be in an area where it's protected from UV, uh, I'm going to say go for it. Now, if you're in an area where you have huge uh, temperature changes from yeah. 100 degrees to 20 degrees in a very, very short uh, span of time, that could also cause a few issues. Um, not so much on your phone, but if you used a substrate that swells and shrinks, yeah. that you could have some delamination some issues. Yep, yep. So great question, though. All right, good. I got okay. I got one for Clara. Oh. Uh, Brian asks, what dyes do you use when you're creating the alcohol ink? Uh, oh, the alcohol the, dyes. The Clara oh, marble. Yeah, we use the uh, aluminum dyes that um, we use for tinting resin and such. They like work what's, really well. What, what are the ratios, kind of? How do you walk them through that real quick? Okay, well, basically the the little needle bottles that I use, which I believe are about an ounce. One ounce. Yeah, one yep. ounce bottles. Um, I fill them up mostly with alcohol, 91% alcohol, yep. and I use up to about four drops is usually my stop point of the aluminolite dye. Now it's not, you know, completely accurate because sometimes you get big drops, sometimes you get little drops, um, so it's a hit or miss kind of thing. Um, and I will just play around with the different colors. Um, I usually will put a little BB in there so it shakes up really well. Cool. Yeah. Can you it, put mica powders in there also? You can. Um, I use it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta use it. <laughs> you can add uh, mica powders to the existing color that you're trying to create with the aluminite dyes, or you can add even some of the resin art coloring to it, mm -hmm. or you can mix them up separately as well and use them on their own. Uh, I'll, yeah. I want to add, can you, can you explain why you don't want to use true alcohol inks in epoxy? In, within epoxy? Uh, some people, or for this for this For, for, this, the, for this application, for this application yes. and stuff. Some, and I'm not going to say all, but uh, a large uh, majority of Most. alcohol inks aren't light fast. So if you have this gorgeous kitchen countertop next to a sunlight, you know, a gorgeous window, it can fade really fast. Yeah. So we don't want that and nope. there's no point in doing that. So that's why we use the Alumilite products because they're meant to dye in resin and you're already mm -hmm. working with a resin product. Perfect. So that's great great, answer. great questions great answer. too. I've got one. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a question from Mary Sorrells. Hi Mary. Uh, her question is, I'm doing a bedside tabletop, 24 by 18. Is there any reason why I cannot use quick coat for the color coat and flood coat? 
Great question, Mary. And the original Stone Coat Quick Coat has no UV protection. She's it talking about the new one. The amazing. The quick amazing coat. Quick Coat. That's the one she's talking yeah. about because we've been doing. That's a UV stable yeah. Quick Coat. Okay. Well, she didn't say amazing. Yeah. So. <laughs> I would get to that. I know Mary no. Sorrels very well. I answered so. her on there. I said, no, you cannot use it. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I said the same. Okay. So that being said, you you have a quick time to get that down and flat or it's going to be ripply. Like, right. Mm -hmm. you got to stop messing with it. I've used the amazing quick coat to do some seal coats over smaller mm -hmm. projects. But you're mixing. You're getting it out of the bucket, torching, removing the air, and not touching it. Yeah. Because you start messing with that too late in the process mm -hmm. it won't ever self-level back yeah oh, so let me so, so let me i don't know if i'm right. on camera or not um so let me answer your question um mary the amazing quick coat is um really a great product for your color coat for your color layer okay uh you can manipulate it you've got plenty of um I don't say plenty of time, but for that size of project that you're doing, you have plenty of time to get it out, manipulate it, but you don't want to use it as your flood coat because like they said, that that product is literally curing as it's self leveling. So you're going to get ripples. So I would definitely do the art coat or the original formula epoxy as your flood coat. But as far as doing your project, that size with the amazing quick coat, get everything lined up, everything's ready to go, mix your product, get it on the table, and you should be okay. So someone just asked what causes yep, yellowing. That's exactly what I was gonna bring up. Okay, okay is it question. time to start that? It All is. right, Let's we're gonna do the Cliff Notes version. We're okay, so, right. so that is the elephant in the room every time we start talking about epoxy. So let's clarify. All, all epoxy is going to amber at some point in its life. All surfaces. Period. Period. It's going to happen, okay? Now, the difference is, one, the quality of your raw ingredients on your epoxy, the amount of UV additives that go into that epoxy, and where you're putting your piece. Are you setting it up for failure by putting it in front of a window or high UV areas, things like that. Now, um, yellowing and ambering are two different things. So yellowing is actually when your epoxy turns a real milky yellowy color, okay? Quickly, too. quickly usually very quickly. That is a chemical reaction. Your epoxy is reacting to something in it. Most of the time, it's going to it, that's it's reacting with some sort of additive. Maybe your uh, the, what you're tinting with. You're tinting with something that's not made for epoxy, uh, or you're tinting with too much of an additive. Uh, just overloading most additives will increase that reaction of making your epoxy yellow. Another thing, not letting your uh, base paint, whatever you're, you're uh, painting your base with, if you're using a latex paint, you're not letting it off gas. The reason Mike and Mitch started using bare paint is because of the low amounts of ammonia. Right. You use Honestly, you use a really high-end paint, maybe a Sherwin-Williams mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, they have a lot of uh, ammonia and other gases. That has to off-gas minimum of 24 hours. Some of the, some of the really high-end Sherwin-Williams, I've let off-gas for 36 hours mm -hmm. if I know I'm doing a white finish. You almost can smell it. Exactly, mm -hmm. so not allowing it to off-gas. Um, also extreme heat for a long period of time. If you pour a uh, piece in a RV and then that RV is not in a climate controlled environment and it gets super hot, Cooking all summer, yeah. it could increase and cause that yellowing. Um, so that's the difference between yellowing and ambering. I have a shower that's almost four years old and I poured 
clear over some, I have some white vinyl, those of you that have seen uh, my shower, I've got some white vinyl, looks like um, uh, Mexican tiles. That white in that epoxy over that white is as vivid as the day I poured it. Um, I've also poured uh, countertops that are four or five years old, white Carrera marble, where I did not overload my tinting. It looks amazing. I've also done some countertops where I wasn't paying attention. I just started squeezing the uh, additives. I added too much white. Over time, it yellowed. Now, Erica has a product called uh, just resin titanium, titanium mm -hmm. white I've seen some pieces that she's done three and four years ago where that titanium white is still as vivid as the day that she poured it mm -hmm. so that is one product that you really want to use uh, we sell it on our website they sell it on their website uh, it is an amazing product but the Lumalite white dye is still very good you just don't want to overload. You want to add a little yeah. bit at a time mm -hmm. until you reach the opacity that you're going for. I want to say it's easier to overload the aluminum like because it it's a squirt bottle right. instead yep. of like just yeah. scooping a little right. bit out of a very, jar. Exactly. Very true. Like it's so, so easy yeah. to go over. It doesn't take much at all. Yeah. And then once you get it opaque, you're just wasting it at that point. Right. You're not it's making it more waste. white. It's just going to be right. that white from that point forward. Right. And now you're just going to degrade right. that quality a little bit. Right. And you can compromise the integrity of your epoxy by too putting much. too much additives. Absolutely. Yep. I would never try to tint a base white with spray paint. Now, no, spray yeah. paint's fine to do uh, dirty pores if you're doing a little bit of that. As an accent. accent. Yes, correct. Yeah. It's the propellant in it. Exactly, it but if we're going to, it, like, if I were going to do a table this size and I'm trying to literally tint all of it, I would have to put so much spray paint yeah. that it would cause my epoxy to be so watery mm -hmm. that, boom, I've just It thins I've it just, down. I'm it's compromising it that formulation yeah. at that point. So I hope that, I hope I answered that. That is just a question that everybody asks and it's just something that you need to be prepared if you were doing this professionally this is your responsibility mm -hmm. to set expectations for your customers don't ever say um this white countertop is never going right. to amber over time natural granite natural marble over time is going to amber of course, of course. Mm -hmm. it's, an it's made with epoxy resin yeah. right they say the same thing and they also tell you that it will yellow in direct sunlight right and we the, we, we're dropping this video very shortly we're going over this pretty mm -hmm. in depth on our channel and we tested in a wet in a uv simulated weather machine where we took pucks of our epoxy all of our resins and we took epoxy from our competitors and stuck them in this weather machine and i'll tell you Art coat one every single one. It's a one, three, and six year simulation, and it, nice. like, it cooks in the UV really quick. Mm -hmm. And you can see right then and there all the different shades of yellow the resin becomes. And right. in the one, three, and six year, art coat stayed the clearest. Wow. All right. I, awesome. I, I can contest it that the, the product works really well as far as I did a mosaic table in my for my mother because they lost all their furniture in Harvey right and they have it now in their new home and it's in the sunroom right next to the window and I did it four years ago and it's still nice and clear and it's probably got three and four coats of, oh, wow. of resin on top of it to you know compensate for all the different heights of right. the tiles but it looks yeah. nice yeah so bottom line if you're going to do a white countertop and anything for that matter follow best practices Right. Follow best practices, do what you know that needs to be done to obtain the best results. Right. And if you follow those, what Rhonda just got through explaining, that gives you the best opportunity. Just getting ready. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. You flopped him up. He doesn't know what you're doing. Feel the heat right there. <laughs> <laughs> that gives you the best opportunity for the best results. So mm -hmm. do things the right way and, and you'll get the best results. All right, cool. Great answer. Next. Uh, I got one. <laughs> no, that was the one. <laughs> Where is it? What, what stone coat product is best to reduce or keep away scratches on a river table? Uh, okay, UTC? well. UTC? Yeah. Okay, exactly. I would say definitely the ultimate top coat. Top coat. Top coat. Um, a properly applied application. Properly. Baby. A pro <laughs> <laughs> properly applied ultimate top coat. 
-hmm. So, uh, I guess we can jump into Probably. the UT stain thing. Mm -hmm. So, properly applying it is the key. Um, I do have a very detailed video on my YouTube channel. It's called The Ultimate Guide to the Ultimate Top Coat. And I am very, very detailed in how to prep, mix, pour, all of the above. And it also really matters on the supplies that you use uh, as to uh, being able to lay it out. Also, I've got a PDF on my website. Uh, I can also send it to you. You guys just email me, Rhonda at rk3designs.com. I will send you that PDF. But it gives you specific mixing ratios that help get your best application. Now, there are a lot of products out there and I want to address the gloss issue. I always have people calling me saying my gloss has a orange peel texture. So coming from a faux finishing background, orange peel means something a little bit different than what you guys say orange peel is. Orange peel to me, I can feel the texture uh, and, it's, and it's pretty aggressive texture. In the gloss, if you do it the way that's in my video and you've perfected the application method and you use the correct amount of water, that's the key, and you put plenty of product down there to start off with, I'm telling you it will be very, very smooth. You can run your hand over it. Uh, I've had people come into my studio and go, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that is the ultimate top coat. I have never seen it go on that smooth. The key to know is all all gloss top coats. I don't care what industry you're in. I don't care what the manufacturer promises you. If you are going to roll on a top coat, it is always going to have some sort of visual texture when it dries. And the reason is because it's rolled on, the light is catching the, the roller marks, even if it self levels, it's going to have a little bit of that texture. Now, there are a couple of um, exceptions. There are some ceramic coatings out there. You don't roll it on, you apply it with a cloth. Okay, there, there are some great ceramic coatings, but your ceramic coatings, I don't care what anybody tells you, is not going to give you the same protection as your ultimate top coat. It may be 1200 degrees heat resistant. That's fine. If it's 1200 degrees, if the epoxy underneath it, because these are micron thin particles, if your epoxy is not rated at 1200, it doesn't matter what your ceramic coating is rated, rated at. Okay? Also, scratch resistance. These ceramic coatings are amazing for giving a gloss shine. They're amazing for hydrophobic um, protection with your water. Amazing, they're great, but they are not going to give you the scratch resistance that the Ultimate Top Coat gives. Now, does that mean the Ultimate Top Coat is scratch proof? No, I can scratch it just like I can scratch a piece of marble, mm -hmm. but it is very, very durable and it takes your epoxy to the next level as far as the durability. Now, I've got video where I've tested several other products mm -hmm. on the market. So, um, you know, I'm just telling you, I'm not just saying this because I'm a fan. <clears throat> I have tested other products and I have video to prove it, but, um, I'm not saying that you, UTC is the only product that you can apply. It's not. It is a very good product. Now, if you want to spray, there are better products than the UTC out on the market if you want to spray. What you have to ask yourself then is, is it low VOC? What are the VOCs? Is it heat resistant? Is it scratch resistant? How, how easy is it to apply? So it's, it's a give or take, okay? So in my opinion, DIY and even contractors, the ease that it is to use the UTC is um, 
I mean, it's a game changer. Without a doubt. So, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this to myself. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to get this. I was like, I'm very passionate. Guys, I'm very passionate about that. Uh, very passionate. And um, so that's, I'm glad that's, we've we've addressed it and it's it's good so yeah. we can I go think to the sure you use your directions instead of the yes. bottle directions. Yes, yes. make sure updating, we're updating those bottle instructions because Rhonda you have you know nailed that formulation it. that like I've done it so it many times nice. I take it yeah. for granted when I'm teaching it and I'm doing it. I can tell almost how it's going to turn out by the consistency mm -hmm. of it. I'm sure you can mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But Rhonda, with a much bigger brain than myself or my brothers combined, did the math, reverse engineered the Actually, formula. I'm still calling it, it's times what again? And then I, yeah. it's like, it's perfect. And I do want to give out a shout to Michelle Ellsworth with uh, Desert Daisy Designs. She and I sat one night for hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours and research this. You nailed so, it, though. Yeah. She did. So All right. we are going to update those instructions on the website and as well on those bottles. But your your formulation for mixing the right amount and the right amount of water to add to that, it's a winning combo. Where do they find that PDF? All right. So if you go to my website and you click on the shop tab, the shop page is going to come up. Under the word shop, it literally says in big, bold letters, ultimate top coat mixing instructions click on that link and that's a printable pdf and then also go to my uh, youtube channel as well mm -hmm. and i've got a video very detailed video called the ultimate guide to the ultimate top coat it's a good video so. don't, Rhonda, don't you have the link on most of your videos as well I think so. Almost any video, I'll have that link yeah. in the and bottom Rhonda of the video. Rhonda loves answering customer service phone calls, so don't hesitate to give her a holler. She <laughs> loves it. <laughs> and her number is 5414. <laughs> <laughs> BR549. Yeah. Okay. Right, I got a question on... Can I just take a brief moment to offer my apologies? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a floor question if I could take that sure. real quick. It's 100%. a short one. Uh, Mike, Mike's asking, are we getting ready? We're getting ready to do our new home floors, 4,000 square feet. Oh. How long uh, after concrete pour do we wait to do epoxy and what would you recommend? Mike, great question and super good timing. Next week, we're literally filming a brand new flooring product. We've revamped our whole flooring system. We added some new products. We added the color flake system for like your garage floors, more industrial style. But uh, you want to wait 28 days minimum on that concrete before you could put epoxy over it. And we have a new moisture sealing epoxy sealer that goes down and penetrates in and creates a vapor barrier for those older homes that might not have plastic under their slab and moisture coming through. So that's no longer a deal breaker. You can put that floor epoxy right over. So that's going to be released here in March. So, you know, a month or so from now. So just hold off a little bit longer on that floor. We have a whole new reformulated system coming out and those tutorial videos will be dropping here pretty soon. Um, I do want to uh, address Jason Adair. All right. Hey, one of our former students. Uh, Jason, so Jason is asking that when he uses the UTC, sometimes he uses it and the humidity is at 50% and sometimes he uses it um, and the uh, humidity is like at 30%. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Jason, I have had zero issues using it here in Texas when it's 120 degrees outside and our humidity is, you know, off the chart, chart and also using it when we have a really dry day. I have had no issues with the amount of water that we use. I haven't seen really any deviation in the amount of protection mm -hmm. and the use. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to say this, and I think Travis is on, uh, Travis Franklin. Down the uh, yeah, now there, and Travis, you can jump in on this. Uh, Stacy may be on here also. They live straight up in the desert. So I don't know if those ratios have to be changed if you're in that dry of an area. So Travis can help me out on that or Stacy. But as far as the humidity at those numbers that you're giving me, I've had zero issues and I'm not had to adjust anything. Hope I answered that. I, I would say the same thing. I haven't noticed anything coming from Texas back to Oregon. It's a big difference in humidity and all that. I have noticed the time frame 
on peeling tape, uh, you know, off of an exhaust. Oh, pedal. absolutely, it's yeah. It's quicker here than it is in Oregon. I'm way later, so I have to do a better job on my videos. You know, it's based on your in, your heat and humidity and what mm -hmm. your working area is on when you peel that tape. Okay. So I kind of leave that a wider window for that very reason. You need to really test on the thickness of that before you could peel it mm -hmm. but i've noticed that not on the top coat but i have on the epoxy itself cool okay uh, yeah we've had more temperature based like variances with resin rather than the utc sure. i haven't had any Very changes great. for utc okay. epoxy <laughs> Yes, I it's noticed a lot. Yeah. with the UTC, I was doing it on the floor, testing the floor version, and I was going good. And then I opened up a second door, which created a bunch of winds coming through. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed it getting sticky really yep. quick. Yep. So keep the wind down to a minimum if you want a little bit longer time on that ultimate top okay. application. All right. I, Travis says, I was just going to say a bit, a bit more water. A bit more water? Yeah. Okay, Stacy said that. Okay, so Stacy is in a very, very dry. Uh, climate down in uh, California, Southern California. So if you live in that environment where it's really dry, you may want to uh, add a little bit more water. Uh, also, if you have really hard water, you may want to use bottled water. And I have been yeah. experiencing, experiencing, experimenting, experimenting. experimenting. y'all have Botox, <laughs> so I can't say, uh, with using <laughs> warm water when I'm mixing my gloss because it's mm. so thick and I'm not I'm not saying hot but it's it's you can definitely feel the cup it is warm water and it helps mix and really makes it mix so much nicer and it's not affected my open time it's not affected anything except uh, it does really mix well. So that's a pro tip. Distilled that's water make a difference? Yeah, distilled, I distilled water. water. Yeah. I, I gotta I do a quick follow up on my concrete floor question because I confused okay. Evelyn here. You can drive on the flooring epoxy, it's uh, 36 hours later. You have to wait 28 days to put epoxy over fresh concrete. That's the 28 day wait. It's after you pour a fresh slab, you have to wait at least 28 days to a month because that concrete's off gassing moisture and all sorts of stuff. So you wanna get that out of there before you seal it up with epoxy. But if, after your epoxy's been installed, you wanna drive on that, it's three to four days right after you could go back in there for vehicle traffic. The very next day you can walk across it. Cool, all right. Uh, guys, are y'all enjoying this? Let us know, give us some likes, give us some thumbs up, give us something. Uh, we may do one of these a quarter maybe and and put together something for you um yeah i'm enjoying this this is this is a lot of yeah, fun this is cool. Cool. there have been some great questions i really appreciate it there's All actually right. been more questions that i can't even remember that i'm like that's a great question but the, the feet goes yep so I, yeah i, I awesome. copy and i've been bringing some okay. over for that uh, i got one on a lazy suit okay Can I bring sure that one up? absolutely any tips for equal equally finishing out both the top and the underside of a lazy season have any of y'all done that? I have, but I'm gonna yeah. let somebody else. Both sides of the Yeah, like finishing the top and the bottom. Oh yeah, just take it off. Yeah. Don't explain that to them. <laughs> <laughs> and go. <laughs> You're on. I was a little lazy. So her answer was actually. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because of reasons. Okay. So. I would do one side, the bottom side first, because it doesn't even matter what it looks like, really, ultimately, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things. Do the bottom side first by taping off everything. Make sure you hone in your tape so that it doesn't leak through. But if it does, who cares, right. whatever, because you can just sand it off. Mm -hmm. And then flip it over, tape the bottom, not your edges, but just the bottom, so you can protect it from anything that goes over. And then resin is normal. Wait for it to cure. Pull the tape and you have a fully fledged, mm -hmm. surrounded by resin, lazy season. All right. I'm assuming that when you have the top going over the back side, you want to have a little bit of epoxy overlap and keep that in mind when you're doing the tape so it's completely sealed up. Mm -hmm. Why well, take the back side? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I would go right. over it exactly. with the clear coat, but not with the color coat. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. So I have another way to do it. That's a great way to do it. I have another way to do it. Uh, there's a bazillion ways to do it. Oh, what? <laughs> 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 she just blah, blah, blah me. And you just started. And I just made her do it again. You blah, you on that one. Okay. You need to push that one? <laughs> <laughs> she ain't sorry. She did it on purpose. Zero. Sorry, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> okay, so here's what I've done. That makes complete sense. And it's probably way better than what I'm fixing to tell you. 
I've done the same thing. I've started on the bottom, poured epoxy, I let it roll over, and then I would scrape the edges, and then when it got to that point where it was tacky, remember we talked about that on our edges, I would take uh, my uh, uh, alcohol, and I would rub it all around and make it super smooth. When it dried, I'd flip it over, I would sand, those edges a little bit just because they're going to have more epoxy on epoxy i would sand it then i would pour my top side let it do its thing do the same thing those drips on the bottom i would run my popsicle stick and get rid of any drips at certain at one point when it gets tacky i would run my hand underneath there get rid of the drips do the same thing on the flood coat. So. On a color coat, you would just run your hand. That's gonna mess up your design. Not on the, bottom. on the bottom side. Yeah, but you're not gonna see it once it once it goes over the edge. But if they're trying to resin both sides of it, it's for a reason, right? Are you gonna Are you trying to resin both sides so that you can look at both sides, or so I that you can so. just sure. seal it? She just said how to do both. If you're just trying to seal it, then I would just resin the top, scrape the bottom, and then. Blood, the blood, 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 everything. Right. Yeah, right. So I guess we need to know, are you wanting to look at both sides? That's where I was extra. confused. Mm -hmm. extra. All right, so we need to clarify that in mm -hmm. the comments. So let us know. Well, we answered both ways. Yeah, yeah that's that's right. we're good. Oh, Sylvia asks, can you sand the use TC off if you don't like the finish? <laughs> oh, you okay. I am not going to blah, blah, blah myself. <laughs> I'm gonna let him. I'm just gonna say. He <laughs> just laughed at you. <laughs> All right, Keith, why don't you do this? The answer to that question is. I mean, you can. Yeah. It's yeah. physically oh, yes. possible. You can. Okay, so yes, you can. I hit it four times. <clears throat> Uh, was the question specific or was just just if you don't like it, but you're gonna want to refinish it with something, you know? Okay, so, so let's say I'm you gonna, didn't do a good job. Right, I'm gonna need some help with uh, answering this question in its entirety because th there there could be several reasons why you're sanding down your ultimate oh. top coat. <laughs> <laughs> if the insurance provides for it, you can do it. <laughs> <clears throat> so let's say that you put down your ultimate top coat natural. And uh, you decide, I don't like that. Uh, I would rather have the gloss. Can you just lightly scuff it and then apply your gloss over the top of that? You can, but you're not going to get the same sheen as if you were to apply the UTC gloss directly over your prepped uh, flood coat. Same thing goes if you apply the UTC gloss and you decide, I really don't like that. I want to go with the UTC matte. So to get the ultimate sheen from the natural or the gloss is by directly going over your flood coat, okay? <clears throat> so yes, you can apply gloss over a sanded mat. Uh, it will be a gloss finish, but it won't be the same gloss you would get if you went over the flood coat, and same thing vice versa. Um, if you're sanding down the ultimate top coat natural and you end up with flap lines, roller marks, and you just need to redo it, uh, my recommendation, what works best for me, is I'm going to sand that UTC gloss or natural. I'm going to sand both of those down to where they are absolutely, completely smooth. Right. That in a glare, mm -hmm. you see no little dips uh, that you have sanded sand it off. completely smooth. Yeah. Do you need to sand uh, the product completely off? No, but just make sure that you have it as smooth as you can possibly get it. Right. This yeah. is a, one a really much, important yeah. reason why you yeah. also want to make sure that you have applied your flood coat over your color you coat. So, so you have protected that color coat finish that if you need to sand down the ultimate top coat to reapply it, you know that you can sand it down, that you're only getting into your flood coat and you're not going to damage your color coat. People ask that question all the time. Yeah. Do I have to flood coat? This is exactly why. Because yeah. what if? You so, ruin right. it. If you sand through and you now have exposed under uh, substrate, you're in big well, let's go a little bit deeper than that because that question comes up a lot of do I need to apply a flood coat over my color coat if I'm applying UTC? Remember what Rhonda talked about that whenever you're putting any additives in your epoxy, you have changed the, altered the integrity of that epoxy. You, there's no way that you can have the same durability that you would have with unadulterated epoxy that has had no additives. Did you like that word? I did. <laughs> unadulterated. <laughs> You're not having a drunk epoxy. It makes me feel like I have to talk Dancing to a priest or something. I know. So, like, is this a confession? Excuse me, I've sinned. Push it. Push it. <laughs> the answer is yes. Sand it down pretty smooth. Yes. 
Sand it down smooth uh, to reapply if you're reapplying it because you need you, you don't like the way that uh, your, your natural turned out or the gloss turned out. Um, and also another reason why you always want to make sure you do apply a flood coat over your color coat. So give me a thumbs up if I answered that Great question. Great summation. Or if I, just I, I think that. you answered about 14 you questions. Answered, yeah, I think you went on, man. I loved it. That was I great. think with that the UTC it. that... Um, I, I've done my, more my share of rework on that UTC. If that means more sanding discs. Than yes, if I had an odometer, it'd probably turn over a couple times. <laughs> but um, put your Fitbit on it. Right. There you go. So, so, so the biggest thing with that is, um, do you sample board in UTC? Absolutely. And because even though that you can you can do your finish and you can pour it and all that stuff, screw it up so you can fix it. And that's the the biggest yep. key to, to learning something. I mean, that, that's it's huge. Right. All right. But practice at UTC on something larger than a 16 yeah. yes. yep. by 12 Mixed board. Mile. Yes. It's much different doing it on it size 30, matters 40 square UTC. foot. Yeah. It does matter. Yes, it does. Okay. All right. So I do want to address this issue as well. And I get this question every day, multiple times a day. I get this question. Um, and it's probably one of my biggest pet peeves. I teach it in the class. I drill it into our students. And if you ever ask me this question, I just want you to know I'm very passionate about it. Um, there are a, nope, you give me I'm that money. <laughs> um, do we all get one? Do, yes. you know, if you were out there representing yourself as a professional in this industry meaning basically all you have to do to say that you're a professional is are you charging someone for this mm -hmm. I don't care if it is your next door neighbor if it is your mother if you're only charging for the product if you are going into someone's house or you are charging someone to do this job you are telling that person that you are an expert at this mm -hmm. So, if you are not skilled in this craft, if you've not done enough to where you feel you have mastered this or at least mastered the technique that someone is asking you to do, do not go into someone's house and charge them for this unless you know you're ready to start doing this. A lot can go wrong when you're doing epoxy if you're not experienced and you haven't practiced. Another thing, if you are charging for this, guys, cover yourself legally. Have a binding contract. And I don't mean something that you pulled off LegalZoom. I'm talking something that has been looked at and gone over with a lawyer that knows what they're talking about. If you start walking in people's houses and you're claiming to be the expert and you mess up something or if they mess up something and you don't have a contract stating what you're warranting and what you're not warranting, what those expectations are both for you and your customer, you have no business saying that you're doing this as a professional. Um, also be covered insurance wise. I, I've probably had in the last six weeks, I've had three people come to me that are being sued and they're wanting me to actually be an expert witness um, because they have gone into a home and something has gone wrong. One, one example was a lady had something on her shoes and she literally went to the bathroom and she put a little bit of epoxy on the carpet she is now replacing that whole house with epoxy i mean with carpet because of that one little piece we got epoxy flooring yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> but she did not have general liability insurance Ugh. And now she is she can't afford to do that. Yeah, I'm she also prepped that floor. Yeah, so I, that's, 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 right. Error, that's right. But even the the best prepped areas sometimes will fail. You've got to right. cover yourself. You've got to cover yourself. Mm -hmm. I also had someone call me where the homeowner had a reaction to the spray paint that they were mm -hmm. using, and they had a respiratory issue. They went to the emergency room. Now the uh, the person that was installing the uh, uh, countertop is now being 
student for the hospital bills. Now, all of that could have been avoided by one, setting expectations before they went into the home and also having your insurance. So this is one of the many issues that we cover in our pro class. We talk about the do's and the don'ts, the must-haves, the contracts, the bid sheets, how to price your pieces, how to talk to your customer, all of that. It is very important. This is a very viable business. Uh, countertop epoxies, epoxy flooring, doing furniture. It is a art. It is a booming business. But guys, you have to do it and treat it like a business from day one. You have to do that uh, or you're going to be liable. So I'm off my soft soapbox. Just respect it, the trade. Yeah, just yeah, respect it. Um, I've had people call me that have had people go in and absolutely ruin their countertops and they don't know where to turn because the contractor never shows up. There was no contract, anything. So there's some horror stories out there and I want everyone to make sure that they're covering their self legally before they're starting to go into this these homes and do this Don't let this professionally. get a bad name. That's right. Okay, so I'm up. Like, tra like Travis Franklin box. said in the chat, don't let your very first order be for your first customer. That's right. Yes, like, come That's on. right, exactly. Right. The first yeah. one I did was for my mom. Yeah. And it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like I said, I'm just I'm 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 just wanting you people to understand. Uh, I want you to, to enjoy what you're doing, but I also want you to know you don't just buy a jug of epoxy yep. and say I'm a professional and I'm going to charge you to do your countertops because I'm telling you, you can get yourself in so much trouble. So, we all right. have a support group with, with what you have here with RK3 Designs, the Insiders Group, and so many people who are doing everything they can to help you do the right thing. Take advantage of that. Learn the product. Learn the process. Do the right thing, um, and it helps everybody in this industry. And we could all yeah. be profitable. And this is our classes, guys. This is, I, I mean, I'm not. This yeah. is not about pushing my classes, but in our classes, we we touch on this. Our pro class is four days of this Q and A, hands on. Uh, working with epoxy, we teach you how to fabricate, we teach you how to pour over existing materials, we teach you how to do showers, but we also teach you what's important to run a business. And we give you a support, once you take our class, you're part of the family, you'll always get 15% off your products, uh, you'll have my cell number, you can call us. Uh, I, there's so many times I, I will call Mitch and, and he will step in, Keith as well, yeah. and uh, we are behind you. We want you to be successful because that's what makes us successful. So just saying. All right, we have more questions. Let's just go for another few minutes and then uh, we will call it a night. We have to get up early in the morning. We have uh, we class starting <laughs> at... Ooh. Uh, Nine o'clock in the morning. So let's take a couple more questions. Miss <laughs> PMS has asked a couple questions about okay. getting wooden. Miss PMS. <laughs> that's our Miss PMS one. Thoughts and suggestions on doing wooden stair treads. She's asked that a couple times. Okay. So I wanted to get her in there. Stair treads. It's, I didn't name her. I, I was trying to read that, but, but wooden she nailed stair it. Treads. Like, oh, there might be a reason why she's saying it's best Okay. Wooden. Okay. Wooden? Like yeah. river table stair treads. I asked her if she could remove know. them. Like it's. I would say. The river, you could do stair treads, but you, you got to remember, epoxy can be slippy, yeah. uh, especially if you have slippy. wet feet. Slippy. Slippery? Like slippy on ice. All right, so what I think, I think I, it may not be her, I but someone, someone reached out to me about doing their stairs. Mm -hmm. If you're building your stairs and they're not built yet and you're actually constructing them, then yes, you can pour them mm -hmm. and then take them and install them. If you're looking at pouring them while they're in place, just that's going to be down the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> that's a dirty I want to do it so bad. I want to do it so bad. I just want to Yeah. That's going to be very them. tough because you're going to have. Let it happen. Arm wrestle. You're going to have every stair is going to have. You're going to have to tape. So that no. the stairs don't drip. Do not attempt. On the just bottom. Just remove them. So it's going to be really difficult to do that. 
Uh, I wouldn't advise that, but if there's a way to take your stairs, you know, yeah. make new stairs, you could could do you just do MDF slats and like just you could. do them well, on a table so it could look rivery? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could. And but you I wouldn't it. use MDF because of, or whatever you know, is. they like sell actual wood. treads that are legit for installing. That are like already done. Yes, so they they're already like bullnosed this. even, right, That's for sure. And then you just line them up. I wanted to do a river table strip. strip. So that you could do. Yeah, you cut it Pre Prefabrication. You could do stairs. Now, I would, and a friend of mine, Deb Wakefield, um, she's in Alaska from Deborah's Diddies. If y'all haven't checked out Deborah's her website, what? Deborah's Diddies. Deborah's Diddies. With a D. Y'all yeah, have to check her out. She is amazing. Seven times she said it to me. She like, oh, actually has UTC on her, the mat UTC on her stairs. I went up and down because I stayed upstairs. Uh, and they're not slick. Right. So that's something, something that you may want to do. That's yeah, also, someone asked a question also, about Also, the brand new floor system yeah, I was so talking about earlier, we have a clear grit you can now put into the epoxy. Nice. Yeah, so it'll add a little bit of texture. It to adds it. texture. It's, you could do it in a it, right outside of the shower and you're good to go. Okay, so yeah, there you that go. That dropping here soon. So if I was just, that's where I was going to go was Pouring I would clear stairs. coat that with, with the grit. And now you're good to go. You could have sopping wet feet and you're not going to be slippy. I see people laughing about slippy. my slippy word in the chat. <laughs> slippy. Yeah. It's messed slippy. up. You can never finally run in there. there. You've never seen ah, such a manly a man say slippy. <laughs> there, there is another option, <laughs> too. Right, makes up words. Uh, for slippy the steps, instead style. of the place where you're stepping on, you can do the place that is vertical. You can. Yeah, right. and you can see it, you know, from the eye point of view. But again, up. you're going to have to do that fabrication you yeah. can't do it you can't yeah. you have to do it and then install no it absolutely yeah, absolutely riser. all right so i hope we, stairs all the time we answered your question like design when you look at yeah. it yeah yes. yeah i'm not it's sure it's like a mural but upstairs oh. all right any more questions we're for hire i think we're good yeah I think, so. covered, kind of down. I think we've covered. This has been great. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. we've covered everything, we're guys. Peak views um, right now at 130 people. people. I Ooh, just thumbs, <laughs> thumbs up. Subscribe we made if those. you haven't. And I'll yeah. check out. Ring the bell. That's right. So <laughs> that that brings up a really oh, quick thing. We did oh, touch on oh, that. Yes. That's okay. super good. Oh, yeah. We gotta Bruce. touch that. Bruce has a pro tip for everyone. Uh, this was a question though, off of oh off pre question. Of the thing. Yeah, a pre question we never hit, which was <clears throat> something. Shoot. Okay, how, how do I finished? deal with cleaning my finished countertop and what about staining? So this stuff here, I don't know if you can kind of zoom in or not. We have a product for you. This stuff, totally awesome. Uh, you can get it at Home Depot. Yep. Um, in a, Dollar in a bigger General. Joke. Dollar General. Dollar General. It so is it's concentrated. It's it is totally to awesome. It is totally it's awesome. It's both. Totally the awesome. awesome. And the outcome. Yeah, so uh, the, the stuff people. at Home Depot is concentrated and it'll go forever. Um, but the, the stuff in the dollar stores are already pre-mixed. Mm -hmm. But this stuff here, I've had uh, an accident with a little one in the back, um, spilled some orange crush. Um, and it froze in the back of my truck on one of my sample boards mm -hmm. for two weeks, I think. At least it wasn't milk. Yeah, it wasn't milk. Mm -hmm. But it was orange right. crush, so I thought, you know, that, that's, that's pretty bad as yeah, is. Yeah, that is. And I was like, oh, I'm never gonna get it out. I was like, that's the ultimate test. So mm -hmm. here I used it cleaned right up so yeah a lot of stuff that this will penetrate right. through mm -hmm. but uh so one, one one question on that i've had people because everybody a lot of people are, are starting to understand that that totally awesome uh is totally awesome works great for getting out stains but i've seen a lot of people that have uh, asked about using a magic eraser along with the totally awesome it's, it's too scrubby it depends yeah. on what you're doing it on I've, mm -hmm. I've had really good luck with using the magic eraser with that on a matte finish where i don't right. scrub hard right. Right. just a little bit you could change, i've change. not had good luck using a magic ma a magic eraser on gloss because it will change the sheet yep. so my I switch to a microcloth micro yep. is yep. the yes. best works great and yeah. i got out um uh sharpie uh, yep. This was from a seat cutout, mm -hmm. and I still oh, have a line, yeah, line uh, four lines on each side, mm -hmm. and it was probably at least two to three months. Uh, it took, I think, about three to four. I'd soak it, wipe it, soak it, wipe yep. it, about five minutes in between. You just had a little line. And that Sharpie, yep, about that line, four cool. of them, and completely removed them. Your, I, kids, I was, are, your kids are grown, right? Yeah. Yes. My five-year-old put a Sharpie all over my table, and I was like panicking. And I start, I start with the, like the lightest, the least 
aggressive Abrasive. method right. first. So I just mm -hmm. went to the isopropyl alcohol and soaked it on there, let it soak, wipe it off with a microfiber, and that, that got rid of all of it. Nice. So I went to the totally awesome. One thing I couldn't get out, or my customer couldn't get out, was a, you know the, the pollen in the middle of a lily? I got my customer lilies. Uh, they were gone, so I surprised them with flowers on their thing. So that was you got them, Lily. Well, yeah. I stained it. Sabotage. <laughs> it's Sabotage. So be aware wow. of that. Lilies, the little wow. pollen thing, drops out of the lily. Also, essential the oils. So. Essential oils will straight up out of the diffuser. If you leave mm. that, it will straight up stain so if you leave it for days. But, keep but it would do that to marble. Yeah, yeah for sure. absolutely. Everything we totally talked awesome. about is going totally to stain awesome. granite, quartz, marble, yeah. any other type right. of surface. So right. if it if it's going to stain epoxy, it's going to stain any other type of surface as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Also we're not sorry right, thank you. totally awesome. No. If you're watching, what's up? Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please take, take it away. Just all right. So are we good? Or I think so. I think this was Amazing. I've had so much fun. Thank you guys for all being here. I do we have one you. question. Do you guys want to do this again? Yeah, I already asked. Are they that. A, I mean, yep, play, they said yes. Know, in the, oh, yep, really? they said absolutely. Okay. So that's cool. awesome. Um, okay, so a couple announcements. I do this all the time. Uh, we are out of a few products. I have been promised that we're going to have it uh, ASAP, and we've got a plan in action. Uh, to make sure that we are going to quit running out of uh, the art coat. Let me tell you guys, thank you for being so supportive of our website and ordering from us. I can't even tell you. We literally sold 50 gallon, 52 gallons of art coat in less than six hours. So wow. thank you all so much. Wow. Um, wow. You have no idea how the support makes me feel. I love it. Um, and I'm just, I mean, my heart is big. We do offer free shipping for all orders over $100. That's awesome. And we do do same-day shipping. Guys, we bust our butt to do same-day shipping for you guys as long as you order from us before noon our time because our uh, mail um, carriers, both FedEx and USPS, they come right around 1 o'clock. So we have to have everything ready to go out the door. Awesome. But we will pack up for you ASAP and get it out to you. Um, and uh, what else? We have any more announcements? Anything that you can think of? Anything, guys? All right. Thank y'all. Uh, I appreciate it. If you email me with questions the rest of this week, it may take me a little bit of time to get back to them because, like I said, we have a class starting in the morning. But I promise you, I will get back to you. All right, guys. Yes. We in can. Canada, uh, email me, please. We have a Canadian distributor up there. Email me at mitch at stonecoatcountertops.com. Don't share that email. Yeah. I can't <laughs> ship it. I'm not licensed to ship to Canada Edit. yet, but we're working on it. I'll send colors to Canada all day, though. Yeah. No epoxy, though. No epoxy. It's, it's some legal mumma jumbo and it's stuff. Too hard with to Canada yeah. changed the lids requirements. Right. It's part of our issue. So uh, we're updating the lids. We have to have childproof lids. So right. We so and it's, over. yeah. Also, uh, yeah. So yeah. anyway, we're trying. All right, guys. Until next week. Remember, y'all remember? Do y'all remember what? Oh yeah. Don't, Don't be, be scared. scared. I can't remember it. Move <laughs> forward. Forward. Be and be creative. creative. We love y'all. Bye. 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 Later. I said bye. I